President, let me take this opportunity to welcome uh, C.S. Muturi to, set to the Senate. Uh, C.S., welcome to Parliament. I actually need not to introduce you to these um, corridors because this is a place you headed for quite some time. And therefore, you know the procedures, you know the etiquette. I need not school you in this particular regard. Therefore, feel at home. I will, at this juncture, therefore, allow Honorable Senator Danson Mungatana to proceed and ask his question. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to ask my question. Mr. Speaker, question number 41. Could the Cabinet Secretary explain why some services that are offered at Huduma Center headquarters are not available at Hola Huduma Center in Tanarifa County and indicate the criteria used to determine the service charter in each center. B, what measures has the government taken to ensure equal access to essential services in all Huduma centers across the country? C, are there plans to renovate Hola Huduma Center in Tanariva County, which is in dilapidated state, as well as upgraded services? I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable CS, you may proceed to respond. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity to respond to the questions raised by the Senator for Tana River, the Honorable Danson Mungatana. Mr. Speaker, I take this opportunity to thank you for inviting me to appear and respond uh, to plenary questions uh, before the Senate. The Ministry of Public Service and Human Capital Development appreciates the role played by the Senate in inviting cabinet secretaries to respond to various questions raised by the Honorable Senators. Honorable Speaker, with that, allow me to respond to the questions. Mr. Speaker, Huduma Kenya manages and operates one-stop shop platforms where ministries, departments, agencies, and counties are required to provide services for citizens, citizens' access and convenience. The Huduma Kenya Service Delivery Model for Huduma Centers is standardized to ensure uniform customer experience and seamless service provisions. Huduma Kenya Secretariat, the headquarters, manages the day-to-day -day operations of the one-stop shop platforms. And the following Huduma Kenya one-stop shop platforms are operational. 57 Huduma centers with at least one Huduma center in each county, with the exception of Nairobi, which has five, Taraka Nidhi, which has four, Kiambu, Kajedo, and Lake Kibia, with two each Huduma centers. This is Huduma Mashinani Outreach. This is a program that provides services to remote areas and targets citizens at the grassroots level. The speaker, that service is usually on uh, arrangements and it's mobile. There is also the government-owned Huduma Contact and Tele-Counseling Center, which is a universal information desk that provides whole of government customer service support for digital services. And this is through first and second level escalation for all complaints, inquiries, and updates via telephone short code 1919 and social media. There is also the Uduma electronic and mobile platform, which provides whole of government information to citizens through the Huduma website, www.hudumakenya.gok, and the USSD code uh, 191 
star 191 star 9 hash. In the financial year 23-24, the Uduma Center Hall has served a total of 25,519 customers. The speaker, Uduma Center Holler in Tana River County has an array of 62 physical and over 17,000 online services from various ministries, departments, and agencies services. Uh, there is uh, our next speaker, a full service charter for Uduma Center for Tana River in Hola. The over 17,000 online services are available via Huduma Cyber Cafe inside the Huduma Center in Hola, Tana River County. However, notably, the following physical services are not available at the Huduma Center, Tana River Hola. One being the Weso Fund, the Youth Enterprise Fund, Development Fund, the Commission on Administrative Justice Services, and the NTSA services, and some services from the Ministry of Health and the county, county government services. The speaker, Huduma Kenya, has taken the measures, taken measures should be low to facilitate the de deployment of the above mentioned services that are yet to be physically deployed at the Tana River Hola Uduma Center. With regard to the Weso Fund, uh, the service and provide and uh, deployed services to 35 Uduma centers throughout the, throughout the public service internship program, but the interns from Tana River County did not apply. With regard to the Youth Enterprise Fund, Mr. Speaker, this is available through the Cyber Cafe, which is at the Holler Center, as well as services to do with the Commission on Administrative Justice, popularly known as the Ombudsman. The services from the National Transport Safety Authority, NTSA, are partially available through the Cyber Cafe, but deployment of the biometric kit is yet to be of, uh, to be done. So, Mr. Speaker, there is also the deployment of uh, Huduma Services Center criteria as sought by the Honorable Senator Mugatana. Mr. Speaker, in response there to Huduma Kenya writes to ministries, departments, agencies, and counties, and the county government to deploy services in the Huduma Center service delivery platforms. But it has been observed that some, some MDAs and counties face challenges in deploying their services due to staffing limitations. Additionally, Huduma Kenya makes courtesy calls to ministries, departments, agencies, and counties intending to partner with them in the deployment or support of Huduma centers. For instance, in the financial year 23-24, Huduma Kenya paid courtesy calls to the coast region governors and wrote to the Tana River County Secretary requesting the Tana River County government to deploy services in the Tana River Huduma Center, but they are yet to respond. The service deployment is the prerogative of the ministry, department, agency, and the county government as much as Huduma Kenya may request them to facilitate the deployment process. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I have our next uh, examples of the letters that uh, Huduma, Huduma Kenya has written to those, those various uh, uh, groups, the ministries and the coast region, as well as the secretary to the Tana River County uh, Service Board. The, quest, the next question, Mr. Speaker, is that uh, is to regard to the measures that the government has taken to ensure equal access to essential services in all Duma centers across the country. <coughs> the Speaker, Huduma Kenya <coughs> normally signs service level agreements with the target ministries, departments, and agencies, as well as counties, to ensure they prioritize the deployment of adequate staff across 
all the Huduma Centers. Mr. Speaker, to ensure adherence to service turnaround timelines so that uh, the time taken by each citizen in accessing services at the Huduma Centers is nearly the equal, the Cabinet Secretary in the Ministry of the Public Service, my predecessor, the Honourable Moses Kuria, issued a circular to ministries, departments and agencies emphasizing the importance of uh, adhering to service turnaround times and instructed all MDAs to execute service level agreements with Uduma Kenya on the 26th of March this year. The speaker, further, the prime cabinet secretary did write to, to all the MDAs again on the 22nd of April this year to utilize, and urging them to utilize the Uduma, Uduma Universal staff to ensure critical public services are conveniently within the reach of many Kenyans. The Uduma Kenya Universal staff is a Uduma Kenya staff who is trained to offer services on behalf of ministries, counties, departments, and agencies in more than one area. Currently, for example, the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority and the Affordable Housing Program in the Ministry of uh, uh, Lands, Housing, Public Works and uh, Urban Development utilize the Huduma Universal staff to offer their service in our Huduma centers. In order to support customer access to digital, digit, digitalized online government services, Mr. Speaker, on 30th of June 2023, His Excellency the President launched the e-citizen platform that has made available over 17,000 government services to the citizens. Huduma Kenya is complementing this agenda by providing in-person and assistance support to citizens who need help accessing these services through the 57 Huduma, Huduma Kenya cyber cafes in all our Huduma centers. These are, these are supporting the access to public services to the digitally disadvantaged, persons living with disabilities, the elderly, and any other Kenyan that requires support to access government e-services. MDAs have, been, have, since been, have since trained the Tana River Center Cyber Cafe staff to offer end-to-end -end online services. The speaker, with regard to devolution of services, as this is important, it's one of the key core functions of this house. The recently launched Kenya Fusion 2030 MTA and the MTP4 plan envisages the setup of Huduma Digital Centers in the 290 constituencies. To actualize Huduma Kenya, to actualize this, Huduma Kenya has partners with the members of the National Assembly through a co-funding co model where members use their national government CDF fund for the construction of the centers. Huduma Kenya Secretariat operationalizes the centers by branding, providing ICT infrastructure, furniture, deploying services and management of the day-to-day -day operations of the Huduma Center. The speaker, it is a well-known fact that recently, indeed I think last week, the High Court did um, give some um, decision with regard to the National Government Consumer Development Fund about its uh, continued existence in light of constitutional provisions relating to devolution and other aspects on separation of powers. But Mr. Speaker, Huduma Kenya has operationalized four Huduma centers, that is in Marimanti, Mara, Kathwana, those are in uh, Tharakanithi County and Gatundu North. And in the financial year 24-25, is planning to operationalize seven Huduma centers in the following constituencies, Ronyenges, Molo, Malindi, Kaloleni, Ganze, Maua, and Ikolomani. The following members of parliament have also commenced the process of establishing Huduma centers in their respective constituencies namely Sotik, Lafe, Madera South, Dadab, Kinango, Kapenguria, 
Soy, Madare, Funyula, Tezo South, Bura, Rabai, Kitui East, Embakazi Central, Tetu, Kipipiri, Likuyani, and Kajiado South. Huduma Kenya, the speaker handles government customer queries through the Huduma Contact Center, which provides telecounseling services on a 24-hour global customer support available through a single dialing prefix 1919. Honorable Speaker, Huduma Kenya is on a, you know, on a scheduled basis holds Huduma Mashinani outreach programs. Huduma Center extends services to remote and far-flung areas, improving access for citizens with limited resources. The final question, the speaker, with regard to plans to renovate uh, Hola Huduma Center, which is in a dilapidated state as well as upgraded to upgrade its services. The speaker, in the financial year 23-24, Huduma Kenya, Huduma Center Tana River Hola had a two routine maintenance which included tile repairs for the entire center. And uh, the speaker, we have next uh, a photograph showing how the center looked like before the repairs were undertaken and now it, how it looks like currently. Further, the following equipments were installed at the center to enhance security. A walkthrough, a walkthrough scanning machine, a CCTV security, cam CCTV security cameras and a control room, see biometric access control system and an alarm system. The speaker with our next, again, photographs showing all those, um, uh, all that infrastructure that has been, in, that was installed. In the financial year 24-25, and based on, on the availability of budget, the following additional works are planned to be undertaken at the Hola Huduma, Huduma, Huduma Kenya Center. That is Huduma Center rebranding and B, completion of the tiling repair, tiles repairs, which is at 5%, the balance. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, once again, I wish to thank you for this opportunity to appear before the senators to respond to the questions raised by the Honorable Senator Danson Mungatana. I take this opportunity to request you and the Honorable Senators to urge county governments to deploy county services in Huduma centers across the country. The Ministry of Public Service and Human Capital Development looks forward to continued partnership with the Senate and will continue under undertaking its mandate of guiding the service and creating the enabling work environment for efficient and effective service delivery to all citizens. I submit, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, CS. Honorable Mungatana, pursuant to Standing Order 51C7A, you may ask two supplementary questions. And supplementary questions are exactly that. They must flow from the primary question. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, Kwanza, na shukuru sana waziri wetu wa public service kwa kufika kuja kujibu maswali haya ya tanarifu bwana speaker mimi nilikuwa kwanza nataka kumuomba speaker wetu ah sio speaker siku hizi ni, ni at, um, waziri wetu atembe tanarifa asisikize vile maafisa wake wanamwambia pale hii huduma center iko katika barabara kubwa ambayo inaingia county headquarters yetu ya Tanarifu ukipita fence imeanguka hakuna gate ndani ukiangalia hizo tiles wamekwambia kumebaki 5% hakuna 5% imebaki wewe ndio uone mwenyewe Hakuna maji ndani ya hiyo huduma center. 
watu wanasumbuka bwana speak na pia ukiangalia bwana speaker haujataja oh sorry bwana waziri haujataja ni pesa ngapi ambazo zimewekwa kwa mwaka huu ya kumalizia kazi za renovation hapo umetaja kwamba unataka kufanya rebranding sasa rebranding na fence imeanguka hakuna hata usalama pale rebranding watu wanakupeleka vibaya bwana speaker uh, bwana waziri sisi tunakuomba uje mwenyewe na utueleze ukisimama ni pesa ngapi umeweka za kufanya marekebisho ya ile huduma center kwa sababu huduma center ya hola inaleta pesa na watu pale wanapeleka mambo zao ni pesa ngapi ambazo umeweka fancy isimame mahali hiyo yani ile aibu ya serikali kuu iondoke pale ni pesa ngapi swali langu la pili langu la pili bwana wa, wa, wana waziri bwana waziri hapa umesema eti kuna entance walikuwa wanatakikana na Tana River County entance hawakuomba nafasi hizo Yaani bwana speaker bwana speaker mimi nilikuwa nataka waziri atueleze ni kwa nini swala muhimu <coughs> na services muhimu huduma muhimu kama huduma ya pesa za uwezo fund haziko kwa hiyo huduma center yetu sasa watu wangejuaje ku apply kuwa interns katika hii huduma yako eh, hii huduma center kama watu hawapewi hii service tena ingine ambayo haiko ni hii youth development enterprise fund bwana waziri haipo mimi nilikuwa na kuomba sana wajua hapa Nairobi na sehemu za town hizo sehemu mtu akikosa hapa ataenda pale atajisaidia lakini kule nje nje kama Tana River na kuomba utafutie pesa za kutosha ututembelee ujionee mimi semi maneno ya story na kuomba waziri uje kwetu si mbali ukiingia uki, ukisema tutaenda na tutarudi hata kesho uone tu na uangalie hali zilivyo na kuomba utupatie yani swali ni kwamba je unaweza kutupatia preferential treatment kwa sababu tuko mbali watoto wetu wanatafuta NTSA lesson hawapati paka waende Malindi paka waende Garissa hawapati pale hola na kuomba utusaidie na utu upgradeie hiyo sehemu yetu je utakuja lini umeweka pesa ngapi na utatu upgradeia lini hola huduma center asante bwana speaker thank you honorable mungatana i've given you latitude But, uh, there is no word like upgrade here. I, <laughs> I don't think we have such a word somewhere. Uh, but anyway, I will allow the CS to proceed to, to respond to those two questions. The first question, honorable CS, is how much have you set aside this financial year for purposes of completing uh, that Huduma Center, or rather completing the renovations? And the second question is, considering the remoteness of uh, Tana River County, would you give them, pre, pre, you call it pre, pre, preferential treatment? Those are the two questions. You may proceed to respond. Thank you, the speaker. I still want to thank the Honorable Mungatana for raising the issue that is raised in the supplementary question. Uh, first, I wish to confirm that uh, I'm ready to pay a visit to Hola uh, on a priority basis to see for myself um, the issues that uh, the Honorable Mungatana has raised But uh, the speaker, the issue about the fence and where the center is near a road 
is um, is, uh, is well known to the both the ministry and the Huduma Kenya. But what is remo what is what is to be done, and which is what I've said, is that uh, the fence fencing is still to be done. And Mr. Speaker, with regard to the percentage of what has not been done, I have attached uh, photographs, which um, both, I, I believe, Mr. Speaker, both uh, the Honorable Mungatan and, and myself can, uh, can sit down and agree on the percentages. But what is important, Mr. Speaker, is that um, it is in the plans by Huduma Kenya to do the fence because it's important, and also to do the rebranding. Those are important. Unfortunately, the speaker, as is well known to this house, and indeed to many Kenyans, uh, development money in the ministry was uh, in light of uh, the austerity measures adopted by the country was removed 100%. And it's for that reason that uh, in my answer, I'm saying that uh, we are planning to request for budgetary support. We cannot say how much money because, uh, Mr. Speaker, there is zero development uh, budget in, um, in our ministry with regard to the functioning of um, Huduma centers. Uh, the speaker, I am informed that the issue of uh, availability of water at the Holler Center is one that is uh, that is uh, affected by sometimes the intermittent nature of we by which uh, a water supply at the center uh, is. But again, the center, Huduma Kenya is willing, as long as we get budgetary provision, to handle. Indeed, as raised by the Honorable Senator Mugatana, it will be a sound occasion that uh, citizens will go for services and they have no places um, where they can go to relieve themselves and also provision of water. The model that we are uh, we, we are adopting is one that um, is to provide convenience to citizens when they they go for services at our Duma centers. With regard to the issue of interns, the speaker, it is a matter that um, unfortunately, though falling at the policy level within the ministry, was handled by the Constitutional Commission, Public Service Commission, established, as uh, I'm sure the House fully appreciates, uh, under Article 233, and whose functions are clearly provided for in um, Article 234. It's the one that uh, began the internship program. They advertise. The information that they have given me is that they advertise for everybody in the country to apply. And then deployment. Deployment is on the basis of uh, various uh, ministries, departments, and agencies. In this case, the Weso Fund agency did not, uh, did not uh, avail any chance to the interns, even though, even though there were some who are not from Tana River. But because of the convenience of deploying people to areas which make sense to them, unfortunately, none was, uh, was um, deployed to the Hola Oduma Kenya Center. It's a matter that uh, I will take up with the Public Service Commission so that uh, in the very near future, because they are doing some more internship program, we can get some people trained or attached to this particular center in view of the, the critical, nature, critical role that the, the centers play and the issues raised by the Honorable Mungatana with regard to distances 
citizens from Tana River and Hola in particular have to travel to go and obtain uh, government services uh, in other places far, far away from um, Tana River County. Indeed, the speaker, as I conclude, I want to assure the Honorable Mungatana that uh, we as a ministry, through those various interventions, like the one I've said, uh, the letters written by the Prime Cabinet Secretary, and also the intervention by the, by the head of public service, we intend to ensure as many government agencies do deploy personnel or avail personnel to be trained to over, to for, to over some of the front end services that uh, many of these uh, departments and agencies uh, offer so that uh, you know, we can't get this kind of situation like the NTSA, people in Hola having to really struggle to travel long distances. And I'm sure, the Speaker, I am aware that uh, they have to travel very far because there is no Uduma Center even in Malindi uh, because uh, the Member of Parliament for Malindi has just uh, this month approached me with a view to assisting her set up a Huduma Center in Malindi. So I can appreciate the distances that the people of Tana River have to travel to, to get these kind of services. And the reason why Huduma, Huduma Kenya services was established way back in 2013 and effected in 2014 was to try and bring some of the government services closer to the people. And for that reason, and so many services, we are told, are being offered on the e-citizen platform and uh, digitally through other, the other forms. And it's unfair that we can have uh, a situation in which uh, the people of Tana River cannot benefit from uh, such government services. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Muma. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, welcome, CS. Uh, to the Senate. Uh, uh, see us listening to you, I don't know uh, how to ask the question, but I'll ask. Uh, you seem to be saying you have zero uh, um, budget to implement matters huduma. Uh, you also, you seem to be begging MPs and, and uh, counties and state departments to uptake or to facilitate the huduma services. So my question is this. Uh, one, I mean, is it, uh, we, we are five days to go before we move from NHIF to the Shah. Only 1.2 million Kenyans have registered with the new system against 14 million registered with NHIF. Is your ministry and Huduma services being utilized to fast track the transition of all of those who have paid and are members of NHIF to the Shah arrangement in order for us uh, to avert any crisis in our health facilities come 1st October 2024. Senator Mbugwa. Yes, uh, just note the questions so that you can be able to respond to a number of them as opposed to responding to uh, one and then you listen to the other. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the issue of access for essential services, I would like the Cabinet Secretary to specifically state to this House the measures which have been taken to ensure universal access for persons with disabilities and tell this house how many of these uh, Huduma centers have a sign language interpreters, uh, interpreters for people who deserve that, that service. Thank you. Senator Wambua. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question uh, relates to the operations of uh, Huduma centers, and I would want to know from the CS 
whether there is a common service charter for all the Uduma centers across the country, or we have different uh, service charters for different Uduma centers. Uh, Mr. Speaker, just a small one. Is it not a requirement then that all essential government services are available in all Duma centers? Because I'm hearing the CSA saying is appealing to government departments to second staff to the Ola Uduma Center. Is it not a requirement that all essential government services should be available uh, in every Uduma Center? I thank you, Speaker. Senator Mundige. Asante para speaker swali langu kwa wasiri wa PSC ni kuwa uh, kumekuwa na maramishi katika county 47 mambo ya kuanjiri watu uh, katika city and department eh uh, ningetaka kujua para wasiri ulianza kasi nzuri utafanya namna gani ndio kila county iwe kiserekea uh, keki ya Kenya mzima kwa sababu kumekuwa na shinda mambo ya vijana wetu wale wamesoma na pia mambo ya intern county nyingi imekuwa na shinda kwa sababu wale watu wa kwa department wa kijijiri watu wafanyi imbalancing e, na sasa wewe ni wasiri mpya utasaidia namna gani hiyo ingine e, watu wengi wamepitisha miaka 60 na wanja ashizwa kazi na tunajua vijana wetu wanataka kazi na sasa utasaidia namna gani ndio kila county iweze kuserekea upande wa kazi asanti bwana speaker senator gataya mofaya thank you honorable speaker my question is uh, very simple to the cs public service honorable cs you know unduma kenya services is not about buildings a map that uh, recently is excellent the president was able to uh, launch uh, about uh, three uduma centers in the Rakanithi county Honorable CS, and you are aware. But these Uduma centers, Honorable CS, are skeleton. They are just houses with no staff. If you go to Barimanti, you will not find even a single staff uh, serving citizens in terms of the National Hospital Insurance Fund. No staff for patient staff, professionals for that matter. No staff for Kenya KRA. There are no registration biometrics, no NTSA. So th these are Uduma centers, honorable CS by names. So what is your minister doing to make sure that uh, the core services that are required to be rendered to these Uduma centers are installed? Because we have Uduma center in Marimanti, which is a skeleton of itself. Uduma center in Mara, which is uh, beautifully done, but it's just a shell. Then Uduma center in Kadwana, the, the county headquarters for the Rakanidhi county, which is just there by its name. So what is it that we are doing to make sure that these uh, uh, facilities get uh, to some people who, who is intended to serve. What is your minister doing to make sure that people get services in this regard? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Senator Boni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there's been a lot of uh, conflicting information around costs. Could the minister clarify the cost of acquiring the following documents? One, a new national identity card, renewal of the national card, acquisition of a birth certificate, acquisition of a passport, and renewal of a passport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable CS, you may now proceed to respond. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to really thank uh, honorable senators who raised uh, quite a number of pertinent uh, issues relating to the functioning of Huduma Center. Uh, the Speaker, I want to agree with uh, Senator Catherine Muma, I believe, uh, Speaker, of, uh, I, I, think, I believe I know most of the senators by their, by their names. Um, I did, on the question of um, 
migration from um, NHIF into the share stroke shift is a matter that has exercised uh, the minds of um, many people in government. And indeed, uh, Mr. Speaker, since I think two weeks ago, I have been uh, appalled by the information that has been coming through that only a paltry 1.2 million Kenyans have so far registered. I think it's a matter that should worry everybody who really is intent on seeing the success of the rolling out of the universal health coverage, if it has to really be seen to cover the entire country and as many people as um, it is intended to. Um, but uh, Mr. Speaker, and I think this, my response to this question would um, it's like it to, to answer some other question that has been raised maybe by some other senators. The Speaker, we at the Uduma Center, or indeed at the Ministry, cannot or do not have the wherewithal to compel the ministries, other ministries, departments, agencies, and counties to utilize the, the services uh, offered by Huduma Kenya, Huduma Kenya in their centers. Uh, and indeed, it is in that uh, regard that uh, you know, I did indicate the efforts that have been made by my predecessor in March of this year, by the Prime Cabinet Secretary in April 22nd this year, trying to appeal to ministries, departments, and agencies to, plead, to kindly utilize these uh, services. We, at the, as many at the ministry, have offered to hold training sessions whereby we can have the people we are calling universal staffers, who be a person who is capable of offering services, frontal services, requiring, say, for instance, um, um, renewal of driving licenses, a birth certificate, a certificate of good conduct, and, uh, and several of those services. We can have one person deal with, uh, with five to even ten services. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, as we all know, change moves uh, very slowly. Takes, happens very slowly. So we are, we are seeing this uh, in ministries, departments, and agencies, and indeed even as, as well as in counties. But as of today, our CEO at the Huduma Kenya Secretariat has written to the Social Health Authority asking them to utilize the services availed at the Huduma centers to register more Kenyans into the uh, shift. That will be my response, uh, Mr. Speaker, to the question raised with the, by the Honorable Senator Muma, with whom I agree. Indeed, the issues he has pointed out is, is quite true. With regard to the issue of universal access raised by Senator Mbugwa, um, indeed, it is true that we would require would require uh, a lot of lead time because it's only this year that we have seen a lot of um, efforts being made, but we continue appealing to ministries and departments and agencies. We at uh, Uduma, Uduma Kenya will be ready to deploy those people specially uh, or variously abled maybe people who may need uh, braille services, uh, people who may, who may need uh, uh, you know, sign language uh, services at our Duma centers. But of course, it is some, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a process that takes time because as, it, as we are saying, ministries and departments are not uh, rolling out as fast as we would have expected. But also, I want to agree that there is need for us to begin, even if it is just 
here in Nairobi, because it is, I want to admit, we don't have uh, people offering those kind of services. But it is, it is a desire of, uh, of uh, Huduma Kenya to have uh, such services also available in our very, in our, some, of our, some of our centers, depending on need again, uh, there will be, be need to do some uh, needs assessment. Um, the speaker, there is a question raised by the Honorable Senator Keo Ambua, Senator, the Distinguished Senator for Kitui, with regard to service charters. I want to say that there is an element of, uh, of um, commonness, just like we have in MOUs. Um, as a service charter is likely to, one service charter is likely to differ just slightly depending on the kind of service that uh, a particular MDA ministry or department or indeed a county wishes to offer. But generally, they are common. In fact, I have a model one here, which are the next as, um, in, the, in the responses that I filed um, to the House, it's the next as uh, Annex one. Uh, which was uh, the one, the Tana River Huduma Center full service delivery charter. But it will be modified depending on the kind of service that an MDA or um, a ministry would uh, be offering. The speaker, the Senator for Embu, Honorable Shandra Kamundigi, Munyi Mundigi. Uh, I did indicate, Mr. Speaker, that uh, I, 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 <laughs> I, I know. But uh, the Honorable Mundigi took, us, uh, took me to a different area. It's about uh, employment and uh, fairness in recruitment. Um, the Speaker, um, this ministry, the Ministry of Public Service and Human Capital Development, is not involved in employment or recruitment uh, into, the, into the public service. Uh, however, that's a function, a constitutional function given to the Public Service Commission. As you well know, I'm sure the House is well familiar with the provisions of Article 234. More particularly, if you read uh, Clause 2, it is their responsibility to employ, and if you go to close two, you go to even a paragraph A, Roman two, you may see the functions of the Public Service Commission, and I'm sure the Honorable Senator for Kakamega uh, is likely to expound further on uh, what is provided uh, in that uh, Article 234, close two, paragraph A, Roman two. Uh, it's not a function of the ministry, it's a function of uh, of the Public Service Commission, but they are to be guided, as we all know, by the requirements placed um, in Article 232 on public on values in public service, and also as contained more particularly in the Public Service Commission Act of 2017. The Speaker, the Senator for Saraka Nidhi, the Honorable Mofire, a.k.a. Kataya, spoke about uh, the skeleton, the nature of skeleton staff at Marimanti, uh, which is his, uh, near his village, uh, Mara constituency, and Kathwana in Chukai Gambangombe. It is true, Mr. Speaker, that the, the staff there are skeleton. But as you all know, these are the centers that were just... Um, opened or operationalized actually this financial year soon after the debacle of the finance bill 2024 uh, which we are all we are all quite alive to and we know what happened so it is true indeed that the staff in those uh, three huduma centers are you know skeletal but we will be beefing them we will add more staff as uh, we move on. The speaker, finally, a question by my good friend, the indomitable 
Senator for Kakamega with regard to costs. Um, the speaker, um, we at the Huduma Center may not um, be able to, to speak authoritatively on the question of how much it costs to apply for a new, a new birth certificate uh, or even to renew or passports uh, and all these other certificates because um, uh, the issue of the costs is domiciled in the Ministry of Interior with regard to those ones, but with regard to the issue of um, birth certificate, I mean, uh, driving licenses, uh, that is within the NTSA, which falls under the Ministry of Transport, Roads and Transports, the Speaker. I hope, Mr. Speaker, I've been able to respond to the various supplementary questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Honorable Sears, we will now take the final round. Honorable Mutinda Tabitha. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I uh, wanted to start by giving my remarks to the CS, uh, congratulating him for his new position and role. And I quickly wanted to ask uh, Bwanawaziri, do you have an Uduma number? Because from the question that Senator Boni had even asked in terms of these costs that are in place, since I have an Uduma number, when it came to place, it was to be able to help sort a lot of uh, identifications in terms of having a driving license, having a, uh, an ID card, having an SSF number, NHIF, and all those being consolidated in one card, which then cuts the cost of acquiring all these uh, uh, documents and also helping the government have one data that comprises of all the information for all the Kenyans. So what's your take as far as the Uduma number issue is concerned? What's your futuristic strategic focus as far as this number is in place uh, in this uh, country? Because definitely funds were used. So what's your take, Bwana Waziri? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Kibwana. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Bona Waziri, Karibu Sana. Uh, sorry, I have to mix, uh, speak English, Mr. Speaker. Uh, uh, Bona CS, I was just wondering how would you sustain uh, motivating uh, the staff? Because whenever you go to Huduma Center, you realize there's, in, you know, quality, the quality service is quite down. Uh, the systems are broken down, uh, delay at the counters, inadequate staff. So how do you plan to motivate the staff so that they can work better? At times you even find that they are unable to reconcile um, all the different services that are supposed to be done. Uh, just motivation of staff. Thank you, uh, Banasias and Mr. Speaker. Senate Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to also join uh, my colleagues who are congratulating the uh, CS on his uh, new position. I know the CS very well. Uh, he was my chairman for five years at the PSC, so I worked with him very closely uh, and enjoyed that time uh, working with him. Uh, but more curiously for me, though, is to see the Speaker of the National Assembly before what looks like a dock. Uh, before the Senate, Mr. Speaker, much as he's coming to answer uh, questions. I know that is not a scene he forethought uh, during his years in the National Assembly, but I do welcome uh, the CS quite well. Mr. Speaker, I want to know from the Cabinet Secretary whether at his ministry he has sight or um, knows the exact number of public servants we have, at least in the executive, uh, Mr. Speaker, in this republic, because I know one of the most contested uh, costs uh, to the exchequer. We are living in this very difficult uh, fiscal strain uh, season, Mr. Speaker, and we are being asked to make savings everywhere. And one of the areas that has been pointed out as areas where uh, this administration must seriously improve on is on the cost 
that uh, Kenyans are having to bear uh, to pay public servants. So it would be important to know what is the number and whether in his mind he think they are more than we need, they are less than we need, and uh, if there is, uh, Mr. Speaker, anything being done uh, to ensure that as a country you, we do not take more than a fair share of public servants needed to deliver service and not overburden Kenya, Mr. Speaker, because we are paying too much in uh, salaries to public servants at the expense of the millions of taxpayers who pay uh, uh, taxes. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Beatrice Akin. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable CS, uh, although my questions are uh, touching on sectorial issues, uh, but as the CS uh, public service and in charge of human uh, capital development, I would like to know what your um input would be as a ministry on the various challenges that the public sector in this country are facing. Uh, we have a case of uh, the health sector, the issues of uh, intern doctors. Uh, we have uh, lecturers Senator, that have been on the street. Honorable Senator, just uh, let me guide you. Yes. Um, you are rising to ask a supplementary question. It must be related to the primary question. Yes, Speaker. Uh, although I gave uh, some kind of leeway to, to Alexander, Senator Alexander Mundiki, who certainly veered off. Because any question that is not related to Huduma Center then cannot be a, a supplementary question. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, other than Huduma Center services, there are other public sector services. What is just your input um, as a ministry on the other sectors, uh, public sector challenges, and uh, what would be your take on the challenges uh, that the public sector is going through. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Senator Morango. Asante sana, Mustaiki Speaker. Swali yangu ingekuwa eh, kuuliza waziri na kwanza ni mpe kongole kwa kupata nafasi ya kuwa waziri katika serikali ya Kenya kwanza. Eh, kwa sababu kuna upunguvu wa kazi sana sana katika Huduma center nyingi. E, unafanya nini ama unakusundia kufanya nini kuhakikisha kwamba kuna wafanya kuna kazi wa kutosha na kuhakikisha kwamba kuna foreni katika kupata huduma ambazo inatafutwa ina sana na wakeza katika huduma center. Asante, Mr. Speaker. Senator Kavindo Agnes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. But I, I want to start by congratulating uh, Honorable CS in his new position. Mr. Speaker, my question is, um, uh, how does the CS plan to build more uh, Uduma senders? Because like in Machakos, when one is traveling from Masinga to come to Machakos town, sub-county, from Masinga sub-county to Machakos sub-county, it costs them a lot of money just to come and pick something that they should get from uh, Masinga. Uh, how do you plan to spread across the counties, the Uduma centers, so that you move the services near to the people uh, so that uh, you can uh, uh, serve them from very near, and uh, like other senators, the problem of uh, understaffing in the Uduma centers. Thank you. Senator Katsuri Murungi. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I also want to congratulate the, uh, the CS for public service. 
and also to give my credentials how I know him, as the majority leader has put it. I've worked under him in the National Assembly for 10 years, together with the Senator Manzo. And more importantly, I participated to elect him twice as my speaker. So maybe when time comes, CS Muturi, you come to Meru to do something for me there, especially in 2027, Gondwiri. So, Mr. Sears, um, Uduma Centers is a noble idea uh, which was started by the government of Kenya. Now that we are sterling, uh, we are not sure. As I was driving to this uh, office, Mr. Mr. Sears, I heard you give so many Uduma Centers that might be supported by NGCDF. And I also heard you mention that uh, we have, uh, there was a ruling from the court about the constitutionality of the NGCDF. Now that uh, all these constituencies and approached you, that you do uh, corabo with them. And noting that also you have mentioned that you have no uh, development budget. Uh, what maybe might your ministry do to ensure that all these constituencies that you mentioned and others that are in the pipeline also get money maybe through the exchequer, maybe in the next financial year also, so that you can have these services. Especially in Meru, where I come from, uh, South Menti constituency, Central Menti, Bole, Tiganya West, Tiganya East, Egembe Central, Egembe South, Egembe North. Actually, South, I heard you say, mention that the mobile will be getting one. So what will your ministry do to have these Unduma centers accomplished? Now, noting that NGCDF might be a thing of the past, even though I don't know the, the National Assembly, their strategy to ensure that uh, this fund is restored back. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Manzo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me take this opportunity to congratulate uh, uh, the Honorable Muturi, former Speaker of the National Assembly, uh, for the appointment as a Cabinet Secretary, and go on to ask about the people with the disabilities in the Uduma centers. Uh, there has been an issue that not as many has been hired, and if any, they work at the back office. Uh, what are you going to do to make sure that the people with disabilities first are well represented, well taken care of, and are able to participate in nation building and working within the Uduma centers? I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable CS, you may now proceed to respond. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> and indeed, I want to thank um, the members of this House uh, who have raised uh, various issues and further supplementaries. I think, uh, Speaker, this round starts off uh, with uh, the supplementary question raised by Senator Mutinda. I believe I have not forgotten her name. Uh, the speaker, I want to agree with uh, Senator Mutinda because um, the issue of um, a number, all unique identifier, is what uh, I believe is currently being rolled out through the Maisha card that is being rolled out by the Ministry of Interior. Um, and I think once that is, uh, once it, it, it you know, it is actualized, it will um, go a long way in assisting um, Kenyans um, access several services without having to move from one office to another. Um, in other, some jurisdictions that I'm aware of, um, with one, just one number, the one that some, a person is uh, allocated at birth, you use it into school, into marriage, those that uh, end up in, that, in, in those unions, um, 
and until you know in so many other endeavors, human human endeavors. So I I want to agree with uh, Senator Mutinda that uh, it is it is the the. The, the essence is to have um, a, uni a unique identifier, a number which identifies you uniquely and uh, not, not any other person and with no possibility of being rolled out. Unfortunately, the Honorable uh, Mr. Speaker, we as a ministry are not the ones responsible for coming up with that um, unique identifier is a function in the ministry of uh, in our sister ministry of interior uh, so you know it, it may be a bit um, unfair for me to comment uh, extensively on what my personal views would be about it but uh, suffice to say I, I would want to agree and support uh, the idea of uh, having a, a unique uh, a number one number to, uh, to uniquely identify a person and you, so that you can access all manner of services without having to, you know, just by using that number. Uh, you know, I'm Senator <laughs> Mutenda, allow the Honorable CS to respond and interrupt him. You see, you see, Mr. Speaker, I, I, like I'm saying, it is not our, it's not our ministry <clears throat> that is responsible for the issuance of the, uh, the all manner of cards, including. Uh, I know the, the account that I was also in the past issued with, but uh, which uh, is of no use currently because uh, I think there has been, as we all know, this is public knowledge that there has been a lot of litigation around the issue of um, that, uh, that uh, unique number, unique identifier, variously known as either the Maisha, Maisha number or the Huduma number. It's the same thing. But uh, I think we, what I've read recently is that... Uh, the litigation has now come to an end, and uh, the, the ministry concerned is now rolling out. Uh, the speaker, there has been a question raised by Senator Kibwana, I believe. Yes, I've, uh, I've appeared before her in another committee. Um, the speaker, the issue of uh, motivation of staff, uh, the staff, uh, you know, serving at uh, our various Uduma centers. Uh, is a matter that has been considered, and indeed, there is, uh, I want to announce to the House and the country that uh, Huduma Kenya does uh, give them um, some additional stipend over and above their, um, what they receive as their, um, as their um, monthly emolument to, just to motivate them. Because it's important that the people, we, the staff we have at the Huduma centers become highly motivated because if they are not motivated, the services they will give to Kenyans uh, will, not be, will not be appreciated. Uh, and also to announce, uh, Mr. Speaker, to the House, that sometimes uh, the issues we, we do suffer, we, sometimes it's just, it's just the normal issues, which I believe even within Parliament do happen, issues of internet downturns. And uh, you know, they, are, you know, they, are, they are handled uh, outside of the purview of the ministry and indeed even uh, the purview of the uh, Huduma Kenya Secretariat. Uh, it is not uh, unique to Huduma, Huduma Kenya centers. So it's just something that sometimes we do have uh, downturns of the internet and things like those, but with the time, like we, you know, happens all over, anywhere. Uh, it is resolved and the services continue. But we do, we do give um, some stipends to motivate our staff. And Mr. Speaker, just to announce to this house, until um, early this year when there was uh, a few issues that uh, happened, the customer satisfaction rate for our Huduma Kenya centers was stood at 95%, quite a high one. But uh, because of the issues that I'm sure we are all quite aware of, that customer satisfaction uh, you know, rate dropped uh, a bit to 78%. But we are, we are up and running, uh, desirous, through motivating our staff to rise again to that level of 90, 90, beyond 95%. 
the speaker, uh, the question on asked by Honorable Senator Beatrice Akinyi um, about the uh, challenges in other public sectors, um, and it was not quite clear uh, because it was not uh, specific to what kind of which sector. This is the health sector, I think she referred to the issues of the health center, sector. If it is issues with the, within the health sector, obviously they would fall under the, the relevant uh, dockets, which is the Ministry of Health. And uh, we in public service and human capital development may not be appropriately suited to, to speak authoritatively about them. Um, and how we respond, of course, uh, to those kind of challenges will depend, each case will depend uh, on, the, on its, on its, on its uh, peculiar circumstances so that our reaction cannot be generalized, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the question raised by the Honorable Senator for Kirinyaga, Senator Morango, uh, on uh, skeleton staff, again, uh, I want to appreciate and agree with, you, with him that uh, yes, indeed, uh, because of the slow uptake by the ministries, departments, and agencies, sometimes we have not found it easy to deploy a lot of staffers. And that's why we have resorted now to training the people we are calling universal staffers so that one person can be able to, to, to give services in various, could raise the issue about the education, uh, higher, higher education loans board, matters about the driving license, matters to do with birth certificate. That's why we are training to have these universal staffers. So that uh, we also cannot say that we want to do um, one center, we put uh, there a thousand people. Uh, and I think this is going to be tied to the question raised by my good friend, the leader of the majority party, uh, the Honorable Senator Aaron Cheruyot. Um, that issue of um, how many staffers we are going to have. Um, the speaker, but I'm sorry, and, and actually jumped the, the issue raised by the Honorable Cheruyot because I thought he had gone out now that he's back. Mr. Speaker, just to announce to, the, to this, before this house and to the country, the approximate number of uh, people in the public service, which is not a constant number, is around 900,000. But the number keeps you know, going down, going up, depending on various factors like uh, you know, natural attrition, uh, retirements, sackings, and such like, uh, you know, issues. And of course, from time to time, the advices on uh, stopping recru further recruitment. So the number is not constant. It's just around there, uh, around the figure of uh, 900,000. 900, and that includes uh, uh, people in mainstream public service, both at the national level and at the county level, also the National Police Service and uh, Teacher Service Commission. That, uh, that includes all, all of those categories. Um, my good friend, uh, Senator for Machakos, the Honorable Kavindu Mudama, uh, yes, the issue of people traveling long distances is a reality. Indeed, that's the point that the Honorable Mungatana in the main question, uh, I, I realized was the, his main concern. And it is true. Uh, this, is a, this is a matter that we must address. Uh, but um, just to say that uh, just last, last week, last weekend actually, on Saturday, uh, I had a meeting with uh, the member of Oyata the Honorable Basil Ngui, who indicated to me that he wants to launch um, the construction of a Huduma Center at Matu. Um, and again, like I've indicated, uh, of course we are liaising with the members of parliament in the 290 constituencies. 
we cannot force them. But a discussion had been held long before I came into the ministry, and uh, several members did agree that there was need to partner with uh, Huduma Kenya. And uh, that's why they initially there was an agreed budget of about 23 million for the putting up of uh, just ordinary structures. Unfortunately, uh, when you put the just ordinary structures, Huduma Kenya will only come and you know, help you with the subdivisions here and there. It is not really the ideal. When the drawings were taken to the Ministry of Public Works, and, uh, and I know, here I, I know the Honorable Leader Majority would uh, recall, the Ministry of Public Works, when it comes to doing things called BQs, they are, they are, they are, they are interesting uh, professionals. So they came up with uh, different BQs, uh, raising the total cost to around between 84 and 89 million per center. We are still partnering with, uh, with, um, with, um, with the members of parliament, and therefore the issue of those that uh, are in Masinga constituency, which you specifically refer to, I think uh, if the honorable member for Masinga could also liaise with us and agree to partner with us. Never mind that there's been, uh, as the honorable Kathuri Murungi has uh, indicated, my good friend, and uh, the distinguished senator for Meru and the deputy speaker. Never mind what the, the ruling by the, the High Court last week. Uh, it gave some uh, window, which is that uh, the National Government Constituency Development Fund will cease to, to be operational at the stroke of midnight, uh, 30th June, 2026. So there's still, I think, uh, sufficient lead time between now and then for, uh, for the various members who haven't come forward to us, because this is a matter of giving service to the people we represent. So, in fact, I don't see why any member should, uh, should be dilly darling on the need to partner with us, because we are, giving, we are actually helping them to access also, to, to help people access the various services, pensions, and I don't know, in both houses, the issue of pensions to people who have retired from various places is always a headache. And that's why we are, we are still making deliberate uh, efforts to constantly remind ministries and agencies and departments to please come and offer those services, particularly the front services, to, through our Huduma centers uh, located in various parts of the country. And uh, just to inform the House, uh, that every year uh, the ministry requests the national treasury and of course through the national assembly uh, for two billion shillings to one's uh, setting up of modern huduma centers across the country but uh, sadly we always end up with a zero allocation Honorable Speaker, uh, we should thank uh, the Honorable Manso, the Senator from Akweni, in raising the issue of uh, people living with disabilities in our uh, Huduma centers. Uh, just to say that, uh, yes, indeed, we have considered in some, in some of the places when they have uh, come forward for employment, indeed, uh, even at our headquarters, uh, there are some people living with disabilities working in our Huduma centers. But again, depending on the service, the various services to be, to be given in a particular center, uh, consideration will be given to people living with disabilities because it is, it is a constitutional imperative. It is not uh, optional. The speaker, may I once again thank you and thank the members and thank the entire house for according me this opportunity to respond to these, the various questions raised by the honorable senators. I thank you. No.
Honorable Senators, that terminates our interaction with the Honorable Sears. Honorable Sears, uh, let me, on behalf of the Senate, extend our appreciation for availing yourself for purposes of responding to the questions that uh, you indeed have ably uh, responded to. You may now retire at your pleasure. Thank you so much. We will move to we will move to question number thirty two.